How long was I in there? About five minutes. Why are we not funding this? All right, what's up, everybody? Caden here, back on YouTube. For those of you who are new, I recently finished my PhD at the University of Arizona, and I'm now a postdoctoral fellow at Utah State University, thinking about <clears throat> the mechanisms of the earth. I'm a geoscientist, and <clears throat> regardless of your discipline, it is an interesting time to be a scientist in America. And this is gonna be a short video that is just me voicing my opinion and some facts about something that I think is really important, and that is the federal funding landscape for science, for people like myself, and probably a lot of you, people in the offices around me, scientists who benefit from funding from federal agencies. So I have a few slides put together here. They're really simple, and it's gonna be quick. So you've probably seen symbols like this, the National Science Foundation, the Institutes of Health, the famous NASA meatball, things like NOAA, the U, uh, United States Geological Survey. These are federal agencies that get money from taxpayers and fund science. And I put a very simple slide that explains what I just said. As American citizens, we're paying taxes. Congress funds science agencies before Congress decides exactly how much money these agencies get. The president proposes a budget, and that's the current step that we're at right now. And the reason I am creating this video is because there are some aspects, many aspects, I would say, of the 2026 budget proposal that are, are, will have negative consequences for the future of science, not only in America, but around the world. And so after Congress adapts and approves a budget from the president, those agencies like the National Science Foundation fund scientists, things like my grad school experience. And I know a lot of you are graduate students or aspiring grad students. NSF, can, I cannot overstate the importance of such, a, such an agency uh, if you're unfamiliar. You know, science is the backbone of modern society, innovation, national security, climate resilience, the list goes on. But probably the main point of the video is just to voice the fact that we need to keep funding science. We need to talk to our senators, for example, about adjusting the budget so that not only funding for research can continue, but also things like outreach and STEM engagement, something I'm passionate about. So here's the issue. These are three panels showing probably the three most publicized federal agencies that have been in the news, the Institutes of Health, NASA, and the National Science Foundation as three panels, budget and year on the Y and X axes, respectively. You can see this running kind of stable budget since the year 2000. And then what we're discussing here is this dramatic dashed line, which represents the proposed 2026 budget. Clearly significant budget cuts to all three of these agencies. And you know, these are only three of many, as I showed listed on the first slide. This is kind of a, a dry table, but it shows that within for example, the National Science Foundation specifically, you have different directorates, and these are things like biology, engineering, geosciences, math, and physical sciences. If I just highlight geosciences, because this is the realm I occupy, you can see a, a proposed 44.6% budget cut to NSF Geosciences Directorate. This is concerning to say the least and you can see if you go if you screen or if you pause this and just look through those those percent cuts for you know maybe one of these directorates is more relevant to you you can see that it's it is looking pretty bleak across the board i want to highlight just because i know a lot of you are undergraduate and graduate students that a major consequence of a budget like this being proposed is this dramatic decrease in the number of scientists who can not only do research, but also learn how to become a scientist. For example, my entire graduate school career was, was funded by grants through the National Science Foundation. And if you see this value from 2024, about 41,000 graduate students were funded directly by NSF. And under these proposed budget cuts, that number would be cut 
to about 25% of that. So just over 12,000 graduate students. So this is why this is important, less people who are able to do science. And in the long term, and not even that long term, but in the longer term, a lot of students who won't be able to, to have resources to uh, get them through a science, or get them into a scientific position. And the last thing I'll say <clears throat> that goes a little bit outside the realm of research is just a kind of a personal story that involves funding for NASA and how some of the commonly overlooked tendrils of the budget, the more specific aspects of these budget cuts might affect someone like myself from rural Montana. What, I'm, what I wanna highlight here is the New Horizons mission specifically. This was a spacecraft that passed Pluto in July of 2015 when I was an undergraduate. And I got involved with this, with this program, the consortium called the Montana Space Grant Consortium shown in the bottom right. And they, they basically welcomed me and taught me science and even gave me opportunities to communicate science from the New Horizons mission as an undergraduate. And I just wanna highlight that something like MSGC is funded by the National Space Grant College and Fellowship Project. And in these budget proposals, you can, you can dive really into the depths of NASA's, for example, and find that the budget for programs like this, STEM engagement are completely slashed. And there's a lot of examples like this, some that are far more dramatic than mine, but students who would otherwise have never been introduced to um, outreach and science and, and had their curiosity stimulated are at risk when budget cuts like this happen. So they fluctuate, but we just need to provide specific examples, I think, and just speak up for the future of science in America. And I know it was a pretty America-centric video, but it's important and we need to keep funding science. And I know a lot of my other videos are like, day in the life of a field geologist in the Andes, a bunch of beautiful views. This is a little more dry perhaps, but none of those videos would have happened without the National Science Foundation. So that's all I wanna say. And I hope everyone's cruising and killing it. And it's summertime, at least in the Northern Hemisphere. So go get in some water, touch a plant, enjoy the outdoors. Hope everyone's doing well. Talk to you soon. Peace.